Hey y'all, this is going to be a quick review of the Strep A test kit that we went through in lab this week. I thought it would be a good idea to go over what Strep and Strep Throat is first before we do anything else. Strep A is a gram-negative cocci bacteria. Its scientific name is Streptococcus pyrogenes, and it is also called Group A Strep or GAS. Strep A can be the cause of various infections in various parts of the body, including scarlet fever, empatigo, and cellulitis, but we are mainly going to focus on strep throat for this video. Strep throat is a medical condition caused by strep A bacteria. Its medical term is streptococcal pharyngitis. Viral throat infections can sometimes manifest symptoms similar to strep throat, but those symptoms are going to more typically revolve around coughing, runny noses, conjunctivitis, and hoarseness compared to strep throat. Streptococcal pharyngitis symptoms can include a sore throat, fever, and pain when swallowing. If the patient still has their tonsils, they'll be red and swollen, and they might have white spots or streaks of pus on them. Some patients will also have petechiae, or red little dots on the top of the roof of the mouth. That's pretty characteristic of strep throat. Uh, they might also have swollen lymph nodes in the front of their neck. Treatment is typically antibiotics. Penicillin works pretty well. There's also amoxicillin, and if the patient has penicillin allergies, there are a couple of other options as well. The CLIA waived Strep A test kit requires a sample taken from the back of the patient's throat with a swab from the kit. To collect the sample from the back of the throat, rub the Q-tip a couple of times on each side of the throat, or you can do a figure eight that goes above the uvula. You don't want to hit that uvula because otherwise you're going to make your patient gag. Taking the sample can sometimes be a little bit confusing if your patient doesn't have their tonsils anymore. So let's look at what normal tonsils look like. If you follow the bridge of the mouth uh, with the uvula, the tonsils are going to be those little masses on each side of the throat. So it'll be these areas we're gonna color in right here. This is what will be red and swollen in a patient with strep throat and will possibly have pus and white spots on it. The patient's throats will already be pretty sensitive, so it's really important that you are very careful to not hit that uvula. This patient here has healed from a tonsillectomy, so if we look at the base of the tongue on either side of the throat, we don't see those little masses that we saw in the previous picture. As medical assistants, we're allowed to perform CLIA waves tests because a lot of the possible opportunities for error have been removed from the procedure. Whenever you're opening one of the new kits, always initial or write your name on the box somewhere and put down the date and time. Oftentimes in your clinic, they'll have you perform a quality control test when you open that box. If the box is already open when you're using it, just check the expiration date and read the instructions, even if you have it memorized. And finally, when you're working with an already open kit, don't combine it with another partial kit, even if you're missing something. Here we have one of the test kits from the lab, and I'll spend the rest of this video doing a summary of how to do the procedure. Each kit will have Reagent 1 and Reagent 2, and they are used to create the solution that you're going to develop. Positive and negative control solutions are included in each kit, and you'll also have a vial of dipsticks that will be developed uh, to obtain a positive or negative result from your sample. Start by adding four drops of both Reagent 1 and Reagent 2 into one of the tubes that come in the kit. If you're performing a positive or a negative control, use those little solutions that come in the kit and then develop it like you would any other sample. And it's really important that you actually do the procedure like you would with a sample from a patient. Now that you have your solution ready in the vial, you can go ahead and put that sample swab from your patient into that vial. Spin it 10 times to make sure that the sample gets into that solution and then allow that sample to sit for one minute. Next, squeeze the end of the swab from the outside of the vial as you pull the swab out of the vial. This increases the amount of fluid left over for the dipstick to react with in the next step. Remove a dipstick from the canister in the testing kit and put it into that vial into your sample. Mix it around a little bit and allow your sample to develop for five minutes, and exactly five minutes. It's a really good idea to set a timer. When you finally have your developed dipstick, refer to the instructions to interpret the results. Two lines can develop on the dipstick. The top line is an indication of whether or not the reaction occurred as it should, 
and then the bottom line will be a positive or negative result for strep A. If the top and the bottom line developed, that means that the reaction occurred as it should, and you are positive for strep A. Strep A is present. If the top line is the only line that develops, that means that your reaction did occur as it should, but no strep A is present. If instead, either no lines develop, or only the bottom line develops, that means that something went wrong with the process. The kit might be expired, there might be something wrong or defective with the reagents, maybe you missed a step. So if that happens, try again with that kit after reading the instructions. And if you are still getting invalid results, try a different test kit. Running a positive or a negative control test using those solutions that come in the kit is a good way to see if what's going wrong is something wrong with the kit or if it's something wrong with your technique.